been on there. Actually, can you guys hear me, like, right here, or in the back? Yep. Can you hear me? Great. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, let us know if we need a mic. Um, and we'll, we'll mic up. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Um, sorry it's been a while since our last meetup, because, uh, as, as so happens, Josh, myself, and John got pretty busy over the past two months, so sorry it's been, like, two months since our last meetup. Uh, but nice to see everybody here. I want to thank our host, Exio, for this awesome meeting space. Um, we'll probably be holding meetups here on the reg um, in the future. They also have a computer lab in the back, so that's a good opportunity for us to start our labs again, uh, to start hacking with stuff like React Native and all the stuff that we want to do with you guys uh, with the Rehack Labs. So that's going to be super exciting. Um, so since we last met, it's been kind of a interesting, uh, kind of an interesting two months since uh, we last uh, last met up here. So React Fiber is in beta. So that's, so that's super cool, yeah. Um, so it's actually in React Native. The latest version of React Native is rolling Fiber now, so if you want to mess with it, download, create React Native app. Um, you've got the, I think they're on like alpha 16 or whatever it is, not even the beta version. But it's got all the nice stuff, like you know the component that catch we were talking about, um, and a lot errors. of them. And errors, actual yeah. error boundaries, <laughs> yes. You're, you missed this huge discussion we had earlier, Jim, about error boundaries and components. So, um, so the error boundaries there. Interestingly, a little bit of a little bit of controversy in the React ecosystem here. The Apache Software Foundation actually has basically said we can't use React for any of our stuff because of the patents writer on the license. There's actually a GitHub issue out for it. If you want to keep track of it, I'm keeping an eye on it um, for my purposes now. A lot of you guys know I'm a software consultant, so uh, we push React and React Native on our clients. The majority of our clients, it really doesn't affect them. We ran it by their legal teams, and they're like, man, it's just a paper tiger, don't worry about it. But um, it is an interesting thing to keep an eye on, because when stuff like this happens in the open source community, it just kind of, you, you just want to take a second look at it and see if there's something that might affect what you're doing. The internet database, like switch off of it? Yes, <laughs> RocksDB. RocksDB switched off of it. Right. So keep an eye on it. There's a GitHub issue out on it. There's a long, uh, comment trail, so you might want to mute the notifications because you have people being snarky about it, and I hope the Facebook team doesn't shut down that issue because of that reason. Um, code push. Code push. I'm not sure if you guys have been using Code Push. Um, that's the stuff that sends your React Native code over the air. It's officially part of uh, Visual Studio uh, Mobile Center now, which is awesome, by the way. If you guys are messing with React Native or any native applications, very awesome tool there for continuous integration, for A-B testing, for analytics, that sort of thing. Um, and it's free. And last um, was actually from Josh. Thank you, Josh, for this link. The uh, James here came up with a Redux first router. Yet another router. I know. I know. That's like the thing in React. There was like se several options, but um, it's definitely worth a look. Um, if you have messed with Redux little router um, that uh, Formidable Labs has put out, this is kind of a technically a more terse version of it, a little more clean version of it. Um, and yeah, it's definitely worth a look. I know client-side writing is, routing is one of those problems that we seem to keep solving all the time. But it's all, always good to have um, different perspectives on it. Sorry. Um, interestingly enough, I was looking up uh, Stack Overflow trends. I think this is actually the first year that React Native finally overtook Xamarin and Cordova. So that's also worth noting that um, if you're to take Stack Overflow stats at face value, um, React Native has now kind of taken the crown of the hybrid platforms, even though it's definitely not a hybrid. But anyways, tonight um, is going to be a pretty cool uh, talk here with uh, Danny. Thank you for um, volunteering the, the topic for tonight. This is actually a topic that interests me personally, so I hope it interests you as well. Uh, Server-side rendering of React. I know a lot of us do a lot of spas, um, but this actually will show you a, a new framework, a more advanced framework, some might even argue, um, that allows you to do some server-side rendering. So without further ado, I would like to take it away to Mr. Danny here and a presentation of Next.js. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Those updates, can you do those each time? Yeah. Your favorite, you know, the favorite articles yeah. that you guys have found? Yeah, for sure. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah. Let me, uh, let me put you up on here first. Yeah. All right, Danny, it's all you. So it's okay if this thing you remember? Yeah, that's fine. It's just a projectile and stuff. Alright. So black, not too bad. 
Um, yeah, so I'm just a regular developer. My name's Danny, and uh, I'm probably about the same level as you guys, if not lower. <laughs> so feel free to jump in and ask questions or contribute in any way. I just happen to have a lot of server-side rendering experience because I had to rush it on a project and hack away at it for weeks. So um, I might know more than you in that respect. But if you have something to, to contribute or a question, definitely raise your hand and interrupt me. All right, so we're going to talk a little about server-side rendering first, and then we're going to go into building an actual Next.js app. Deploy it with now. It should take all of five minutes to get a Hello World up, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we'll go into maybe solving some of your particular problems that, that you might want to do in Next.js. If nobody has anything, I have plenty of examples we can throw in there. All right, so to get started, uh, server-side rendering is pretty much, in React, is pretty much taking your component, the uh, React JSX, that, you know, JSX is compiled down into a bunch of create element uh, functions. So it pretty much takes that and renders to a string instead of to an actual DOM element what you put in your JSX. So it looks pretty much the same in JSX as it'll pop out as a string. Except you get to use all the cool functionality of if your initial state and your Redux, if you're using Redux, has some data in it, that will pump out through the uh, um, through the, the component that you're, you're loading with your service like rendering. So um, the way this, this normally happens without Next.js, we can actually go over this. Question, but can, can you just explain like why would you want server-side rendering? As a yeah, 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 definitely. Delivering the whole thing. Yeah. So the normal reason people want server-side rendering, the reason I was shoved headfirst into it, was uh, SEO. Um, there, there are other reasons, and they, they can be as varied as web development, pretty much. Um, but most people. JavaScript enabled. You don't need JavaScript enabled. Because rendering HTML. Oh, you yeah, don't need JavaScript, right? Either. But obviously, normally you want to write your React app and be able. To, kind of the big selling for React service and rendering is that you can just drop your your React app into the server side rendered template, and React takes over immediately. But no, you don't have to. Right. I mean, some people block JavaScript for various right. good reasons. So they'll get right? something. Right. Yeah, but you would definitely need to keep that in mind if you were writing a reactive. But, but yeah, that's definitely a good example. Um, so SEO, uh, and depending on how you write it, it can actually be faster because you can do uh, browser caching of the whole HTML page. So that's huge. Um, other than that, I'm sure you guys can come up with some ideas. Feel free to shout them out. <laughs> So this was this project we're looking at was completely a um, front end app. It had no server side rendering, and I was able to write pretty much two or three files uh, that are pretty short and create a server side rendered app, which is pretty amazing. I've I've tried to do similar things in Angular back when I was in the Angular world, and it's not that easy at all. It's still not that easy with uh, React Universal. I mean Angular Universal. So let's, uh, let's move these files out a little bit. What we're going to be doing that is service side rendering specific really this isn't so. These three functions right here pretty much do the bulk of the service side rendering. Render the string from React DOM server, as it does that, creating your, your JSX functions and then rendering them to a string. Well, that will turn some functions into functions. Render to string creates a, an HTML string out of them. And uh, match is for React Router, and that just matches your path that you pass into it. And you can just pass a uh, rec URL. If you're using Express, you just pass the URL in there, and it'll do all the logic to match that to one of your React, um, React Router routes. 
And then the router context is the actual router context object that you build from the match to pass into your React app so it goes down the proper path and everything. So with those three functions, I pretty much just dropped them into this handle render function right here. Um, and so that's pretty much the, the whole theory behind React server-side rendering is, I mean, you would just have to render the string if you weren't using Redux or React Router or anything. Um, so this router context is the, is the component, and this match function is what you run. Um, and then I'm just using a HTML string to print the page. And this actually prints out server-side rendering code for this entire website. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty complex website, and it was this complex before uh, it was this complex before I put the service I'd rendering into it, so I was able to just drop it in like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and so if you click around in service I'd rendered React apps, it's not reloading the page from the server, it's the React app jump was able to jump in and take over the React routing. So this is actually doing a, a um, front-end app type of navigation. But then if I go to a different page and I refresh, you can see that I'm getting all the, I had that, <laughs> that pretty bugging the JSON string. This is the initial state, but it has all the HTML and everything right here. Um, do, you, uh, do you have to have Babel on the server to do service side rendering? No, uh, you actually compile the server before. And it so just you don't have to out. have an ES6 function transcompiling going on? Right, yeah, so this is my server. <laughs> So yeah, you can run it on Google Cloud Functions, which is only Node 6 and everything, you know, any problem like that. So, let's go ahead and do Next.js and you can see the difference. Hey, Danny, quick question about the routes file there on the render string. So that's just basically a React Router, right? That you're pumping into yeah. that render string? Yeah, it's just React Router. Okay. I'll show you the routes file. So, uh, show of hands, who's heard of Next.js? So about a fourth of you. Um, Zite, I'll give you a quick overview so you know the context. Zite is a, a company that kind of puts in a ton of effort up front to make developers' jobs, not jobs, but their, their lives a lot easier if you buy into the Zite ecosystem. It's a um, convention over configuration mostly. So you can just pretty much install Next or Now, and it just works right out of the box if you know just a little bit about the environment. So we'll be using Next and Now. Now is their hosting platform, and I, I think that's where they make most of their money because you, you can just now and get a free site, but if you want to like a custom domain and stuff, you can uh, install, or I mean, you can pay for a service and they'll give you better bandwidth and everything. I, I think they even do CDN. Next.js is a completely open source project that they just build because they think it's really cool that you can do this stuff with React. Um, and so they're doing it and they're making uh, our jobs really easy if we want server-side rendering with HTTP2, to HTTP2 and uh, prefetching and all that stuff. It comes out of the box with, with Next.js. So they pretty much make it really easy to develop the best possible modern React app. And so that's why people are interested in it. And does that, is this running in Node, or is this running in yeah. Okay, so it's... it's yeah, like, it, it runs a Node server. server, yeah. When Next.js compiles, it compiles all the pages pretty much into like their own like, functions. Okay. And the Node server just loads those functions. So it does a lot of work up front to make the render as fast as possible. 
you don't run it locally, you can't. You can't either yeah. or, but yeah. for most people might test it out on the public web server first. Yeah, you can do now. You, all you have to do is type now. Now you can uh, have it on a public domain. But I mean, most I would say most people do it locally just because you get the hard reload. Okay. And you said prefetching. What does that mean exactly? So when we got HTTP two, uh, we got the ability to uh, not only download multiple files at once. Right. You know, there's, the the limits don't apply as much. Okay. But you get the ability to say, I don't want this JavaScript right now. Don't load this yet. You tell the browser, don't load this yet. I'm going to use this fancy new HTTP2 to go get it later. And what Next Step, Next JS actually does, which is cool, is when you roll over a link, they have a special link function. It'll actually go prefetch. So you get that couple extra milliseconds of prefetch before you click the link. Yeah. So they, they do all this stuff. Oh, you like hover it over the href and it's prefetching yeah. before you click. Yeah. So if you if you hover over a page that hasn't been prefetched yet, it'll go ahead and prefetch. How do you set up the attributes in prefetch? I'm just not familiar with it's that. A, it's a React component. The link com the link component is a React component, and you just put a free prefetch tag on it. But what is rendered in HTML? Is there some new attribute for prefetching files in HTTP2? Like it's a React yeah. component, but what is actually so it's, it's loading JavaScript because it's a front end app. So at this point, it's it's loading JavaScript. So it has on hover. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that prefetch. It's loading the JavaScript for the next page. I get it. Okay, yeah. I've just never done that type of thing. It sounds yeah, awesome. it's super cool, and it's definitely the way the industry is going. So, oh, okay. Um, and next is a great way to kind of like see it in action and get a feel for it, feel the power kind of thing, without having to learn all the technical stuff. But in general, you think if if we need speed on assets that are being linked, you would do this prefetch that you're going to get a faster response time. Let's say it's a PDF file. You pre prefetch some file. I don't know if they can do it? files. I think it has to do routes mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. You can do files, but uh, is there any way to uh, do prefetching like manually? Say after the the you know the front page loads. You just, sure. if you just, you know, like 15 seconds later, you want to go grab these other things that you think they'll, you know, commonly like the next the next page that somebody might go to, without without like next automatically doing something. I know there is someone had a comment. Server push. Server push. Yeah. So you can use server push um, just like any any other app you would do, because uh, you can throw next essentially builds a folder that has all the assets in it, and so. If you understand the file structure of that folder, you can build an express app or any kind of app around it to um, pretty much do whatever you want before you go into the next ecosystem. It makes it really easy to kind of make next just the final step and before render. So you can do whatever you want on your node server. Um, do they, so. they, they get like any hooks other than the little fetch uh, or prefetch prop? Yeah, and they have a. Um, I don't know if it's on this page. Yeah, so they have this get initial props function that actually run only run well, it's isomorphic. It runs both on the front end and the back end. But the cool thing is that it runs on the back end. If you want to get props before the initial render, you can put them in this get initial props. And so pretty much anything you want to do, you can do in this get initial props um, function. And and if you navigate to this page using prefetch like it's not loaded, it'll still run get initial props on the front end as a front end uh, process. So pretty cool like that. It's pretty asymmetric. Um, any more questions about HTTP2 or prefetch or anything? It's definitely one of the big selling points of Next.js. All right, so let's go ahead and install Next. Put the blog because that's a useful next blog, next press. All right, so you 